welcome everyone to this week's Elemental Evolution. Once again, I hope you've had a fantastic week. It seems like the vibrations of this planet have definitely shifted into either a higher level of consciousness or into at least a happier space for most people. So let's start off with that and let's welcome uh, Rhonda and Amy. Are you guys there? Hi there. Hello. Hello, everyone. <laughs> We have a special guest with us who has, um, I feel after reviewing a lot of his work that he has a deep understanding and has probably come to this planet in a, in a time where it is so desperately needed. And so help me, uh, welcome Daniel. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hiya. Hi, Hi Daniel. You? And I think that, um, when you and I first talked and when, when I asked you about the introduction, um, you gave me a term that I love, and that was warrior, right? A peaceful, a light warrior. And I don't know, I, I'm not using the phrase light as in light worker. I'm talking about a warrior that is bringing knowledge and love and a new vibration to this planet. So thank you and welcome. Cheers. It's an uh, honor to be here with everybody. i get my voice out there a lot more and stuff and just speak about um, some of the things I've learned and stuff. I think that's great. And so one of the things that I think is fascinating right now that a lot of people may or may not know about or may not have a very clear understanding is tone, vibration, and energy, right? Like how that is affecting us, how it affects the planet, how it is affecting um, pretty much this reality, right? Yeah, it's true. I mean, uh, you know, everything is communication, you know. Like a lot of people say things energy and stuff, which, you know, to an extent it's true, you know, but, um, you know, I like to say everything is communication because then, you know, you can apply that knowledge a lot more better, you know, within the world, because then you can be conscious all the time of, you know, how you're expressing yourself and, uh, you know, um, what kind of body language, you know, you're trying to uh, give off as well. You, know, you can be a lot more aware of everything that's going on, you know, you know, all of the time. So, you know, that's what I like so to do. Uh, that... I'm sorry. I, there was a little bit of a delay. I'm sorry. Um, do you think, so when you said that everything is energy, but you like to view it as more like communicating, do you mean like communicating through that energy with these tools that you're speaking of? Um, like, you know, we have our voice, obviously, but we also, you mentioned, you know, your body language. How do you think that that relates to the energy vibration that people are feeling? Well, basically, um, you know, most of what's um, spoken, you know, you can find a lot more, um, you know, like stillness when people do stillness. You know, if you um, if you do stillness and go into stillness, you know, everything can be known within stillness. You know, it connects you to absolutely everything because you're taking yourself, you know, the small you out of the equation that opens you up to everything that's actually there, you know, that you can perceive and that's in your reality. So, um, you know, if you want to um, communicate better, you know, all you have to do is become more still in yourself. And uh, that straight away, as soon as you take the I out of the equation, you know, the small you uh, allows, you know, a greater you to emerge, you know, and that's got a far more, you know, greater awareness of everything, you know. How, Daniel, how, when you first started down this path, well, what led oh. you to this path? How, how, how did all of this awareness and, and information and knowledge come through? Because when I look at the work that you've done, it has been just extraordinary and and so um so encompassing the amount the volumes of information um tell me how the information how started coming start? yeah yeah because yeah. you're so young well yeah i mean i was i was a lot younger than i am now but i've always um you know been conscious to an extent it's just as you get older you learn you know a hell of a lot more you know and um you know it becomes an ongoing thing and you know even now you know every everything you know my whole being you know it never stops it's like a path that's infinite you know you just carry on learning carry on refining yourself and expanding your awareness and you know there's no stopping it because you know that's what inf you know infinity is it's infinite you know but where it, where it really started was i got to um it's probably around i don't know i mean i've always been conscious all my life like it says but around 2006 ish 
when um you know youtube was just starting to you know come out and stuff and um you know i decided to um you know i didn't even have my own channel or anything on youtube for a few years i was just on there soaking everything up that i could because all of this uh, information was you know very new to me you know and um you know there was a lot going on in the world and um i knew that i had a lot of solutions to a lot of the problems that were going on in the world and you know i knew that if if i had some solutions then other people must have the solutions but they're not actually implementing them and then i was you know decided you know there's something going on you know there must be a force in the world that's preventing people you know from actually you know creating the solutions and actually living them you know every day so um you know then i started finding out that there are actual groups within the world that don't want people to you know go to a higher level of consciousness they don't want uh, people to create solutions or be, you know, a part of the solution because they themselves, you know, the people who do this or the beings or whatever, you know, they like to, uh, you know, have people, you know, on a lower level because it allows them to, you know, basically suck all of the energy and uh, their labor out of them from what they're doing, you know, because, um, you know, what we're dealing with in the world is, you know, we're dealing with people and beings who you know they don't create for themselves you know they don't create abundance so you know they need us to be able to do that and so the only way to do that is to you know basically hypnotize you know people into you know um doing what they want you know and if you can manage to do that you know without them even realizing then you know that's that's what they've done you know so <laughs> so i think that that's fascinating that you brought that um you brought that up on the show because yesterday I actually watched something, um, on energy vampires, which to be honest with you, I have, um, I have my own belief about how energy works and how it is exchanged. And so this brought a lot of confirmation and what you're saying, um, it does as well. It, it seems that yes, I believe what you're saying that there are beings who, either feed off of the lower vibrations. That's why they create it. That's why they manifest in a way that puts most of the population into fear and survival. Right? It allows um, not just the vibrational control, but it also allows um, physical control. When people are in those states, um, it, it's pretty much um, a sheep level, right? Does that make sense? But yeah. You yeah, know, I mean, it's, it's, it's really easy to manipulate somebody when they're in fear and in survival. Yeah, right? and it's true. And um, that's what these, um, you know, ruling families and elites and, uh, you know, beings, I call them FOD, which is, you know, forces of dissonance, you know, which is a term that I like to use. Yeah. And um, basically, um, they create a culture of death. And today in the, in the world, we're living within a culture of death. You know, everything's about fear, like you says. And, you know, to these people, you know, chaos pays to them, you know. The more chaos they, exactly. they can create by, you know, funding groups like Boko Haram in uh, Africa or ISIS, you know, in the Middle East and destabilizing regions or creating, you know, countries that create uh, destabilization in areas, you know, such as Israel, uh, Israel sorry. They will, uh, you know, fund with their uh, energy, you know, the energy that we call money. You know, they will pump all right. of that energy into those different areas because, you know, chaos pays, you know, to them. To them. And this is where, but here's where, here's where it came into my consciousness yesterday. And I'll be interested to hear your view on this is that I realized that one of the things that happens is that it still is a free will. Like we're talking about energy vampires, but the truth is, is that nobody can take something that you're not offering. And it's like all of the things that are happening on the planet, I have question as to there are some who are not vibrating in that. But I would say that a majority, including myself, vibrate in and out of those same levels. Because I can be of the highest vibration, my consciousness is high, and then let somebody piss me off on the highway. Do you know what I'm saying? When I'm driving or there's something going on and I'm not being conscious, right? And all of a sudden I'm ranting and raving like a complete maniac until I come back into the conscious and I'm like, whoa, that was weird or, you know, whatever, but it's still there. And so I question as to, we had talked about earlier 
the universe being a mirror, a reflection. Do you think that this planet is also the same, a reflection of what we are all holding, or is it just something else? Well, the universe, you know, it's it's a direct reflection, you know, of ourselves, you know. But um, it's like you says, um, you know, a lot of, you know, um, spiritual people and stuff, they think that if they hold a vibration, a high vibration, it's going to, um, you know, keep them, you know, from the bad. Which, you know, to a degree, yeah, it's true that you yourself won't be affected. And it doesn't matter, you know, how much chaos is going on in the world. You could still, you know, hold a smile, you know, on your face still and still be in a high state. But the truth is people still need to, um, you know, do their, um, you know, they still need to stay in that state. But actually, actually, you know, actively, physically do something as well, you know, about uh, things, you know, it's um, because we're in a physical realm physical action is going to be needed you know to um you know to get to where we need to go you know and now when you're talking about physical action are you talking about like actually physically creating something doing something or are you talking about energetically like because i and, and i don't mean to be confusing but it seems like and i've heard because you said it's within right and all these other things. So if you start changing your consciousness, do you think that that will reflect not just for you, but everyone? Or are you saying that everyone is in creation and so we can be affected by the energies that are not just us? Damn, that well, was a lot. Yeah, that's okay. It's, uh, well, in the spiritual realm, you know, there's, um, you know, when you have a thought, there's nothing stopping the thought. So it just goes on, you know, forever and ever. But in the, uh, in the physical realm, when you have a thought, if you as a person have a lot of uh, integrity and, and, and uh, you know, you're very um, conscious, you're very aware and you're very still within yourself, you know, to a high level and a high degree, your, um, your thoughts will influence all of the thoughts of the people and the beings around you, you know, um, you know, to a big degree. So, you know, if you're um, powerful spiritually, you know, you will be influencing thoughts around you, you know, to a certain degree. But, you know, I always, um, I always, like you says earlier, you know, it's not about the culture of death. You know, I'm part of a culture of life. So I like to protect life and, you know, guard life and, um, you know, try and help it thrive, you know, where I can. Because that in itself. What is that? Makes, yeah, I'm gone. sorry. Life. When you like give me a better description of that, because I'll be honest with you, like this, it's not that I don't have appreciation for life, but I also feel that there is a lot of manipulation and control put into the thought of life. And that's where the fear of death comes. So what is your description of life? Well, life, um, you know, it's just, a, a, you know, a presence, you know, and um, I don't know, it's how the the will of, you know, the creator, you know, allows itself to, um, you know, to enter into this domain where we are today. You know, that's its, you know, ultimate expression, I suppose. You know, the ultimate expression of the creator, you know, is life, you know, I'd say. And the secret to life, you know, like a lot of people say God is love. You know, I'd say that, um, you know, life, the secret to life is love as well, you know. So I'd say that, you know, it's not just a culture of life and guarding life, you know. You know, my motto that I've always uh, said is, you know, be love. And uh, there's so much wisdom and so much deepness, you know, there's so, there's, you know, there's so much in that small statement. You know, if you just say be love. And then, um, you know, I always leave little ripples coming out of it as well, you know, because, you know, if you do, you know, be love and um, so, you know, you do that. So my question is, is then and, and I get what you're saying and I agree that I I mean, that's one of my things is I when I start to have negative thoughts or I start to go into that space, I have a mantra of peace, love, joy. And I just say it over and over and over again until I'm either distracted or thinking of something else. <laughs> but I also know that in creation in the universe and how things work, it takes more than just one energy to actually create movement. Does that make sense? 
yeah definitely you know like it's, friction um, like magnetics like like if you think about how literally like if it's a reflection and we're looking at the physical as a reflection of what we know as the universe right then you have to look at the certain things that we use and know and and like magnetics and on all of these different things it takes the positive and the negative to actually cause movement to make flow to make change Right. So, so if you are only vibrating in one space, then what happens? Yeah, but it depends what the, um, you know, the space is. Cause I, I always, um, you know, like we're speaking on negatives and positives. I just like to go beyond, you know, all of that kind of stuff. I like to, you know, I, I think that, you know, one person, you know, can change, you know, the entire system, you know, for everything and, you know, everyone because we're connected to the system. You know, so if your will is strong enough, you know, in yourself and, um, you know, you do that, then, you know, you can have a, a big effect, you know, on everything because you're the strongest pull in that area. You're the strongest singularity in that space. So everything like a black and everything, you know, or white hole, you know, will, um, you know, the vortex will, you know, wrap itself around you and stuff. But if you want to amplify, you know, that energy, you know, more and more, you know, then if you work with others, you know, because you can't really do anything alone, you know, within this world. And even, you know, Native Americans, you know, they know that, you know, just surviving in the world, you know, there'll come a time when you always have to rely on other people. Well, make sure that when you do rely on other people, you know, you have people around you that are, you know, um, as strong as you are, if not stronger because then, you know, that will cultivate, you know, that will put you into an environment, you know, that can cultivate a higher consciousness, you know, and make you stronger as well. And also, you can learn off them, you know, for example, as well, you know. And, um, you know, you are right, though, about, um, you know, reflecting things, you know. I call it, you know, the law of shining. And, um, you know, some people have talked about this in mm. different words and stuff. But if you do shine what you want to be right now, the same as if you do shine out, you know, what you want to, you know, what you need in your life, you know, it will come to you, you know, because the universe is a mirror and it will reflect outwardly, you know, eventually if you hold that, you know, that thought and that belief and, you know, don't let anything shake it, you know. So. I do know. Um, and here's, oh, go ahead. What? Last question real quick. Um, Daniel, let's, we, you and I kind of touched on this a little bit last night when we were chatting and talked about laws of magnetic attraction. And, it, you know, when you're speaking about this in my head, I'm daydreaming about all these fractals, um, which to me look like little magnetic squares and triangles, um, that are, are, are kind of being sent out and then uh, finding others, you know, other shapes that, that are, that they kind of fit with and then rebonding and reforming with that. Um, can, but that's such a removed vision. Um, how in our real life, say for example, this radio show, how would the law of, of, of one or magnetics um, get you to where we are here today? Does that make, does that question make sense? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the first thing, if you want to, um, you know, get you from where you were to where you are, you know, there's a few things. But, you know, one of the things that, you know, you have to be is, you know, just open. You know, you have to be open to possibilities, you know, and the way that I say as well, you know, I'm a being of love. You know, you have to be not afraid, you know, to love and to, you know, to be open. And, you know, um, I know some people have spoken about, um you know, um, how to be discerning because, you know, the only reason why people are afraid to love is because they're afraid of getting hurt or, you know, used or abused or whatever else, you know, but I always go on, um, you know, I, I do stillness every day, you know, meditation, you know, I've done it for many, many years. So, you know, I'm very still and, um, you know, my energy is very compressed, you know, in this small, um, body that at the moment I've had to do a lot more exercise so I can create a, a bigger vessel, a better, stronger vessel for it, you know, which is just a natural process, you know, as you go to hold more energy. And that's why the, uh, the Buddhist monks also did their Kung Fu because the stillness level that they, you know, were trying to get to, their bodies couldn't, contain their energy you know at that level so they had to create and build new bodies for themselves you know and that's why they do all the kung fu and everything and all the you know the breathing exercises you know and stuff and um yeah but um you know so I want the to thing jump. That, i'm sorry daniel yeah i was gonna I say the thing jump. that led me to here was just basically just being open to possibilities you know 
and uh, responding to opportunities, you know, as they present themselves. Which I think is not by coincidence, right? But I want to jump back because you were talking about the reflection of the universe and what's happening on this planet right now and how the individual and how the connection of all is in existence, right? But that also that somehow you are an individual but still affected by the whole, right? Yeah, we're like white blood cells, you know, within a body. That's what I was uh, going yeah. That is exactly where I was going because that's, again, when we were talking about as within is without, the body, this is where I was, I, I know that this was before we started recording, but when I was saying that the body is also a mirror, right? It's like, it, 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 it's not on accident that if you hold something within you, right? Like, let's say you're really sad about something that happened in your lifetime and you just can't get over it. It's always a memory. It's not something that you dwell on or live with, but it's stuck there within the cell, Right. That cell, yeah. like what you're talking about, is a projecting out and pulling in of reality and creation. Right. Each cell, like what Amy was talking about, that's divided out and projecting. Right. That is each cell within our body is also the universal energy. Right. So when you start talking about, you know, only being again of one vibration, this is where I, I want to get back to this because, again, when you look at the cell, you look at creation, you look at everything that it takes, it is not just about love and light because that is not human. That is, we have already experienced the spiritual reality. We are here in this physical. Going into the 4D is still physical. It's just being able to expand, again, our consciousness so that our creation is not limited to the structures that have been shoved up our ass. Excuse my language. <laughs> anyway, so I, I want to hear, I want to, I want to see or, or hear your perception on how it is that you think that the vibrations that are manifesting on this planet, right? Because each planet holds a vibration. Each planet is projecting in. We have had thousands and thousands, millions of years of creation, right? So the timeline and all of these things that are put into existence to cause fear and death and all of this is only of this timeline and it will change and it will evolve. And I think that that's part of why you're here. So go ahead. Yeah, yeah, definitely, you know, I mean, um, you know, uh, things are always evolving, you know, constantly, and, um, you know, like Bruce Lee says, you know, how can you control another person when you can't even control your own thoughts, you know, from moment to moment, you know, and, um, exactly. you know, he's correct, you know. But do you think that, so here's my other, I, I, I kind of have a lot of question around these things, and one of the things that I've been thinking about recently is that, I have judgment on, or I held judgment on people who were not seeing things the way I was, right? Like believing certain beliefs that I felt are primitive or unsubstantiated or, um, Neanderthal, as I used to say. Um, and what I realized is that first of all, who am I to decide for another? But secondly, that each being in their reality and in their experience, maybe they need to be in that space. Maybe they need to be at a level, you know, it's like we're all on Jacob's ladder, right? And so it's maybe they're on step four, where some of us are on step seven, and maybe some are on step 11, and maybe some are on step one. Do you see? It's like, so who, like, so when we carry this judgment or this holding of what we are experiencing now, I think it's important what you said about if we, the individual, the being, is vibrating at a higher level, your experience will be different. Can you go more into that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, like you says, you know, there, you know, when you think spiritual people, you know, you think that, you know, I'm spiritual, they're spiritual, you know, great, you know, but, um, it's not about that. It's not, it's not about creating, you know, identities, you know, you know, human beings, you know, you have to find the human beings out of uh, the population, you know, and a human being will never bring harm, you know, to people outside themselves. They'll never, you know, try to dominate or control, you know, any other in any way. And like you says, you won't try to force your beliefs or, you know, where, you know, you think a person should be because, you know, there's really no way to measure where anybody is anyway. You know, there's no way you can do it, you know. So what you have to do is, 
you have to first of all focus on what you're doing you know which is what we're doing now you know and how how uh, you know i ended up here anyway in the first place which answers your question earlier as well and then the second thing is um you need to recognize you know the people who you can work with and who you can do stuff with and create things with because you know although you know um you know you are connected to everything and one one being does have the potential to you know create um you know and change the whole you know it will be amplified you know um you know massively by working with others you know and there's no greater thing you know to um you know to give to others you know because you know when people come into this world they have a cargo you know like a like a gift that they have to deliver into the world you know and um you know that's that's what you have to find out you need to discover what it is and then give it to others you know and give it to the world why yeah. you know because you know when i leave here i i you know i don't want to leave here and just be all comfortable in my life i want to leave here and um you know i want to have given you know everything that i've had you know that i have you know that i've got i want to deliver my cargo and then, you know, expend all my energy and be, you know, knackered, you know, completely tired by the time I leave, you know, that's my plan. <laughs> <laughs> I love to hear that because, well, and the thing is, is um, you probably won't have to be tired because, you know, energy is, is amazing and it seems the more you give, the more you get. So I think that you are on such a great path and, and you're doing and, and really focusing on some things that I feel like are really important. And one of them is tone. I had, I, I read something that you had put together and it talked about the pyramids, Stonehenge and different layouts on the planet. Can you kind of describe that for us and, and go a little into what that's all about? Yeah, um, well, like you said, you know, everything's, um, you know, a reflection, isn't it? You know, um, outside ourselves, you know, and the ancients, you know, they were masters of um, this kind of stuff, you know. I mean, there's more than enough proof now, you know, with 100% uh, certainty, you know, to show that there are many civilizations within the past that were a lot more advanced, you know, on Earth, you know, more so than we are today. You know, and I mean, I, I've covered it in depth in, you know, my series, you know, Raising Eden, you know, and uh, oh, Transcendence. Yeah. And then, you know, I've I've created thousands of videos since, you know, 2008. And, um, you know, I mean, Brian Forster, you know, he, you know, he flies all over the world, you know, today and uh, goes to all these ancient sites as well as, you know, many other people as well. And, um, you know, they've just uncovered so much, you know, great stuff that you know there's without a shadow of a doubt that you know in the ancient past we um you know we were you know that there was civilization or you know high consciousness on the earth that was more advanced than you know what we are are you know today and um you know there's like people like i don't think enoch is an actual person i just think it means to speak or you know to enact and um you know and he, you know that you know it describes a wondrous civilization in the past you know, who misused the keys of higher knowledge, you know, and they were unable to save themselves, you know, from what happened to them. And, um, you know, there's more than enough proof to show that all this did exist, uh, you know, did happen, you know, like Graham Hancock, you know, he's been going into a lot of uh, this stuff lately as well and stuff and in the past as well in some of his books. And, um, you know, there's more than enough evidence there for everybody to have a look at, you know, it's, you know, none of this stuff's new, really. And, um, you know, if you want to look, if you want to know about, um, you know, DNA and um, languages and stuff and ancient languages of light, you know, you should look into Dan Winter as well. You know, he covers it, you know, in depth. And, you know, he's, you know, he's just fantastic, you know, because um, he goes so into all of the ge geometry of it as well and stuff of the universe. So Amy has a question for you, but I want you to go more into that for sure, because that's important, I think, the language. Amy, are you there? Yeah. I mean, my question is, if all these ancient sites um, and and part of the information that you um, had put forth in some of your uh, videos was that, um, for example, the pyramids hold their own tone and vibration, and that tone and vibration adds to the structure that is, you know, the all of that pyramid. So if if those pyramids or that those ancient tones that are installed into the stones that have become our reminders and guideposts um, for finding our way back to who we really are, 
are those vibrations held within us as well? And then how do we access that? Um, is it walking among the pyramids? Not all of us have enough money for airfare. Is it um, going within and contemplating the pyramids and then resonating with what we think they sound like? I mean, how does how, how do we magnetize ourselves to receive information from non-communicative energy forms? Does that make sense? Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, you know, you need to, um, you know, recognize, you know, the higher consciousness of yourself. You know, it has a specific frequency, you know, and the frequency is um, think of the time in your life when you was most at peace, you know, because the time in life when you were most at peace is the moment when um, you have the least amount of resistance from your, you know, your mind, because, you know, a person has two minds. They have a human mind, you know, the I that they think with, but then they also have a deeper mind, a greater mind. And, it, you know, it's the greater mind that you need to, you know, connect to. And, you know, your higher self, it's uh, it's not an individual, you know, it's a relationship, you know, and everything is relationship. So all you need to do is get yourself into relationship, you know, to your true self, your higher self, you know, and, um, you know, you are your higher self. You just have to remember, you know, you just have to be open and, um, you know, and also while you're within this world, you know, use discernment not to be, you know, used and abused or whatever as well, you know, but, you know, like I says, you know, think of the, the time when you were most at peace in your life and, you know, that's your soul frequency, you know, that's the higher frequency of, you know, your true self and, um, <clears throat> you know, whatever brings you peace, you know, to get yourself into that higher state, you know, whether it be doing art or music, you know, or, you know, creating something, you know, whatever conduit you choose to get into that higher state, it doesn't matter as long as you can get yourself into that state, you know. I mean, I, um, you know, I put music on and, you know, I, you know, I do loads of paintings as well and stuff. And, um, you know, I relax and, you know, I find that as well, you know, to get myself into that state, you know, there's two easy, like, cheating ways to do it as well. You know, one is... I uh, put myself into a bath or something and then I go below in the water and then that allows me to become really still, you know, <laughs> and water is like the lubricant between all, all dimensions anyway. It's very pure, you know, it has memory and uh, can, you know, um, keep information within itself and, you know, you can program water to realign its uh, molecular structure to whatever you want it to be you know but the other way that i do it is also i um i wait till very late at night when my body starts to shut down naturally by itself and then you know i find it very easy to get into you know different old states and stuff you know <laughs> but is that is that writing writing because I, I i find the same thing with myself um i have a better connection to more information when everything is quiet when my neighbors are gone to sleep when the television is off when i have time to hear my own breathing um i uh, a lot of times I'll, I'll listen at night to music that will block out the outside noise and then that is the only noise that i hear um besides myself and it allows me to come to a greater understanding of connections between things. Um, so it sounds like that there's a formula to being able to find the, the quiet state. How in the middle of a city um, d do you find that the reduction of, of technology um, when everybody goes to sleep, do you, do you find that that is a reason why it's easier for you when it's in between the state of sleep? Does that make sense? Um, yeah. Well, I, yeah, you know, I, uh, I know what you mean and stuff and, um, you know, it's true about technology, but you know, uh, when it comes to technology, you know, there's no, there's no weapon, no laser weapon, no secret weapon or no alien weapon or ancient weapon, you know, that can be fired at a person you know, to, um, you know, affect their, you know, the higher consciousness if they are, you know, focused in on it. You know, there's there's nothing that can affect you, you know, within the slightest if you're, you know, within your true self. And it all comes down, you know, everything just comes down to, you know, self-knowledge, you know, to know thyself. And, um, yeah, it doesn't matter if you're within a war zone, you know, if you can, if you have the ability to be able to, you know, still your mind, 
you know, then, um, you know, then, you know, you'll be able to not be affected by everything that's going, you know, on as much, but still be within a highly aware state, you know, more so than you would if you wasn't in a still state there, you know, because, um, you know, basically it's, um, you know, don't let fear, you know, don't let fear overtake you, you know, because fear is, you know, it's just a guide and an ally, you know, showing you what you have to integrate and overcome to get back home, you know, to your true self. You know, that's all fear is. And fear doesn't become a problem until it washes over, you know, never let fear wash over you or take control of you. You know, it's like it's kind of like a thief in the night that just comes in. And, um, you know, if you give it some control, if you give over to fear, then it will take control of your situation. And um, it will always lead you to something that's constrictive. It will always lead you to, you know, a path that goes nowhere to something that's bad for you. You know, so always be within that space of love you know as much as possible in in that peaceful state and know that you, you know you have that power inside yourself you know all of the time it doesn't matter where you go we're in space we're in time that you go you know you've always got that power you know so just be love basically <laughs> I, I wonder at what point in time fear took over if the ancients the whole planet you mean is that when it you mean like when did it become in injected into society because that's right. where most people vibrate at right right i mean that's the, so i'm sorry before we go into that though Rhonda has a question hi there yeah um, yeah i mean i have a question and sherry knows um and i spoke with this about amy also um in regards to vibration in the body um, I experience and have been for about five years now that when I fall into a deep sleep, that it's more on, you know, when the full moon and the new moon come about, this vibration just attacks my body. At first I thought it was my bed, but it just, it happens all night long and it keeps me up and I fight it off and fight it off because I don't know what it is. And, you know, you're talking about tone and vibration and I'm thinking that maybe this has something to do with that. If that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, <clears throat> you know, it's um, like if you have like a space, you know, a spatial dimension and then you have like, like um, you know, like we all know, all planets make certain frequencies and stuff. So, um, you know, if you have like, um, you know, a planet like the moon that's within that space, you know, it will change the frequency of, you know, all the bodies within that area. You know, so what you're saying about, um, you know, you feel different, you know, at different phases of, um, you know, you know, that that's definitely true and stuff, you know, as we all know. And, uh, you know, don't forget as well that, you know, um, the moon and a body like that has a pull. Effect. You know, we're mostly made of water. You know, so your water you know, is getting pulled as well all the time, you know, and twisted and stuff. You know, so you know, that's probably what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, I never, I never understood it. I could never figure it out, you know, and then you fall into the fear because you don't know what it is or what's doing it, you know, <laughs> and, you know, some people actually talk to Leslie, ba Leslie Blair, and I'm sure all the listeners are familiar with Leslie, and he mentioned, you know, falling into the vibration, just fall into it and just let it happen, and I'm like, okay, if I do that, I'm going to end up somewhere and I won't be able to get back. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think um, you should fall into it and just let it happen. What I think is you should not, you know, be afraid of it, not be focused on it. But, um, you know, just um, like I says, focus more on, you, you know, you focus more on what you're doing. And if, you know, you do feel weird or something at certain times in the month or whatever, you know, <laughs> you know that's uh, all women do anyway, you know, from time to time. But, um, you know, excluding that, you know, if you do feel weird, just, um, you know, ease up on some of the stuff you're doing and just, um, you know, take more time out for yourself, you know, to relax, you know, and um, oh. and then. Because it's a balancing, isn't it? You know, balance is the key to everything. So, you know, if you feel that, you know, you, you know, you don't know what's going on and stuff, just, you know, take a step back a little bit and, you know, l allow things to, you know, balance themselves out, you know? Ah, uh, okay. That, make, that makes a lot of sense. It really does. Because, you know, the mind goes in all different directions constantly. And every day it's something different. Um, so, I mean, I, I can imagine that the situations you get into with everyday life can affect things you know, like that. Yeah, um, it's like it's like um, it's like being in a swimming pool, and then they turn the wave machine on, and all the waves are crashing up, you know, and sloshing from side to side and stuff. You know, it's it's a very turbulent, chaotic environment. 
you know so what you need is stability and where's the stability going to come from you know it can't come from outside of yourself like uh, the elitists try to do you know because they're filled with the most fear out of anybody you know the elitists you know um they're filled with the most darkness and the most insecurity you know out of anybody within you know this uh, dimension you know um so you've got to create stability and you know the stability just you know comes from within yourself and you know all the thought forms in that environment you know when your waters are being pulled you know because of the moon and stuff as well your body you know in all different directions it's um you know it's like all the water is sloshing up you know all over the place so you and all your thought forms you know because they're within vortexes as well you know they're going all over the place as well you know it's all sporadic you know so you need to create stability so you know like i said just focus on yourself you know take time out and just um you know relax you know just relax and right but e- even in the process of that with the stability and the balance it just it still happens i mean i go from point a to point b i went from you know where i was down to florida and it was so peaceful and just wonderful and you know it takes a few days to find me and then bang it happens again you know um, yeah so this is what I this is this has always been my question what is this <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, it's just, uh, it's nothing that can be avoided, you know, because the moon's above us. It's a part of, you know, the system that we're in and stuff, you know. But like I said, it's just, you know, focus in, you know, on yourself and stuff, you know. And I mean, when you do that, it, it's not so much that you're avoiding it. It's you actually, um, you know, you're accepting that, you know, there's no going around it. And then you'll, uh, you know, you're stabilizing it. So that will get you through. And spiritual isn't avoiding things, you know. It's not you know looking the other way it's actually going through them and the difference in degree of spirituality is how fast people can um get over big things like that without it affecting them enough without it derailing them you know and spiraling them off in a different direction you know that's what makes a powerful right. spiritual person you know? they're not very you know they're not affected as much you know they go through all of the crap but it just makes them stronger. You know, they take it as a learning experience, a learning curve that they know it's to serve them ultimately to make them more powerful, you know, and life strengthens you. You know, that's the purpose of life to strengthen you, you know, and you know, that's why we're here. Right. Okay. So, so what do you do? Like with me, for instance, when this happens, there's no way to stop it. So how do you, what do you do? You just sit in it and let it happen. Well, you sit in it and let it happen, but you also, um, you know, focus on something else you know focus on the positives you know on positive stuff or uh, you know and um like i says focus in on that you know that peaceful you know part of yourself you know whatever brings you peace if you're in a chaotic environment a turbulent environment you know where you don't know what's going on you know anything could happen you know you need to create a space of peace within that you know that's your power you know that's that's what you have to do so you need to create an anchor point within all of that that creates stability you know for you so you know although it's all going on you're not as you know as affected by it you know whatsoever and you can overcome it you know and then integrate it and through the experience of integration that's when you evolve you know that's evolution you know that's what makes you powerful oh thank you so much daniel i appreciate that it, it, it really, it really sounds like, um, you know, we're using you like fear and the wave pool is a great analogy. And I, I, I think that one of the examples I use to overcome the fear is the example of the POW where they are in an unchaotic, chaotic and unpredictable and unloved world, but yet they still survive, um, with the power of who they are and wanting to survive through it. And, um, you know, to go within themselves to be able to make it out of a POW type situation. I think that, um, you know, our, our ancestors, um, our recent ancestors who experienced that, um, our grandfathers who were captured in Korea or Vietnam, um, even those back in World War II, um, and, and how they survived by really knowing who they were and knowing that this wasn't meant for them and that this was their experience, um, that they were observing. Um, it, it, because of, because I've anchored into the strength that is that person, um, when these waves come crashing over us, I keep going, you know, step aside. This isn't me. This isn't imposed upon me. 
Um, I hate wave pools because you start, you know, you feel that f- first surge and you know that people are going to be falling into you. So as soon as that first surge hits, I step aside and what, what, you know, watch other people crash into each other and then be there to help, um, the people who uh, were overtaken by it. Um, great analogy, by the way, Daniel. Cheers. Well, I like to say that, um, you know, all you need to do is remind people, you know, that, you know, everything is one, you know, everything is an ocean, you know, they are an ocean, you know, we're, and even this dimension now, it's within a sea of motion, you know, so I just remind people that they are the ocean, and so they can't drown, you know, because, you know, they may be a drop within the ocean, but they're also the ocean within a drop, you know, so how can they drown, you know, in that kind of situation when they are the ocean itself as well? Sorry, I had my mute on. (laughs) Okay, so here's the interesting thing that I think you use a lot of water analogy. And um, I have had a lot of vision with water. And so it's probably one of the only things that I can think of that I have fear of. It's like what you were saying, it being a dimensional gateway. I feel like that the oceans right now are holding a very strong, I don't know if reflection is the right word or... A manifestation of what needs to be released on this planet so that people can do exactly what you're talking about, push forward and evolve and actually have the reality and experience of being able to hold a higher vibration. Because when you have lived generations in survival, right, which is a very low vibration, it, it, it takes us and it keeps you thinking into a place of hopelessness where then there is no light of anything else. Right. Limits. And what you were saying, how there are uh, there's a reason that our society is set up like this. Right. And it may just be powers that be like the elite and all these other things, but it may just be a reflection of what humanity is experiencing. What do you think of that? Yeah, I mean, you know, everything's a, you know, everything is a reflection, you know, completely. The universe is a mirror and stuff, but it's, um, you know, it's down to people themselves, you know, where they want to go from this moment forward, you know, what they want to shine out. And like I says, you know, we can create anything we want, you know, we're, you know, we're powerful beings, you know, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, all this stuff's going on, you know, to us, you know, it's, um, you know, on every single level, they're trying to, you know, hypnotize us and control us and put us into a lower state, you know, and, you know, it's not, it's not hard just to, you know, just say no, basically, you know, if if you know something's wrong, just say no, and then get on with something else. And, you know, don't, you know, I always say don't engage in business with those who you know are doing, uh, you know, bad stuff, you know, don't buy the products, you know, don't, don't go, um, you know, don't do what they do, basically, you know, because, you know, ultimately, you know, evolution is up to us, you know, we evolve by what we do, you know, what we do creates us into what we're going to, you know, become, you know, so if you want to, you know, be a highly conscious, you know, aware being, then start living, you know, that life right now. And then already you've already, um, you know, you've already succeeded. You are, you know, from that point, a highly conscious, you know, aware being. And, um, you know, you'll only create ripples then. But, you know, when there's very uh, few of people who are conscious and aware on the surface of the world, you know, it becomes very important, you know, for like groups like, you know, this to come together and other groups around the world, you know, and hold, you know, hold that, um, you know, vibration and hold that, you know, community together, you know, and giving everything into it. Because, you know, if you give everything, you will get everything, you know, because it's a reflection, you know, obviously. But you need to make sure that when you do give, you're not giving to, you know, the wrong people or the wrong, you know, situation. And, you know, you know, I, I do a lot of meditation, you know, so I'm always um, checking in with myself every single day, you know, my higher self, which is a relationship. You know, like I said earlier, it's not an individual. It's, um, you know, so every hour I check in with myself and, um, you know, that helps me and prevents me from straying too far, you know, from, you know, my true self and what I should be doing within the world. You know, and, uh, you, you know, I, I think that's, you know, a good thing that everybody should do, really. You know, check in with so themselves every day and, uh, you know, take time for themselves. More. Explain check in with yourself a little bit more because maybe um, I don't know necessarily that a lot of people are even conscious of the being within the being, right? 
Yeah, that's true. But I mean, that's why this world was architected the way it was anyway. You know, as soon as you're born, you're given a false identity. You know, you're given a piece of paper and then you're given a name, you know, a fake name. And they don't even write it in normal letters. You know, they put it into capitals and stuff, which takes it even further, you know. But um, people need to know that, you know, a human being has two minds. You know, there's two beings. There's the true you and then there's the human you, you know, like the vessel now, you know, that they're operating through. And you need to put the uh, the two in relationship, you know, true relationship. And like you says, you know, most people are within the I, you know, they're within the, the ego, you know, and you need some ego. Otherwise, you wouldn't get up in the morning and do stuff, you know. So ego is not bad. You know, don't kill the ego. You know, it's not about death of the ego. It's about having it in true relationship with, you know, the spiritual you, you know, the true you and um and then operating within the world and allowing that to guide you, you know, through life. You know, like, um, you know, that's the leader, you know, that's the leader of a person. You know, you don't look outside yourself for leaders. You know, you find people who have leadership abilities and, um, you know, they can only have that if they're if they've if they're actually successful in what they do. Then, you know, you can um, be led a little bit, you know, but ultimately the leader is, um, you know, in yourself. You just need to learn to put it in true relationship, you know, and then cultivate it every single day, you know, as well. You know, take time out for that true part of yourself every day to strengthen it. You know, every hour, you know, you can check in with yourself or even if you don't do it every hour, checking in with yourself, you know, and still in your mind or whatever. You can just make sure that you take time out for yourself, you know, to balance things, because if you do that, that in itself will give you, you know, a hell of a lot of more you know, power to be able to create, you know, effects within the world and change, you know, because you'll be a lot more integral, you know, you'll have a lot more integrity as well, you know, and, um, you know, your your singularity will be a lot more compressed. So you'll send waves out a lot more, you know, uh, powerfully that will influence all thought, you know, within what we call the mental environment, you know, which is like a third realm of, um, you know, all of this. <laughs> right. So do you think that, again, so how do you feel that the, because like we were saying, the body also holds and plays a role, in my opinion, in all of this, right? Mind, body, soul. There's a reason that, that it, there's a trilogy in almost every creation and existence. So how is it that you feel people are recreating a lot of the traumas that they experience as children? as they experience throughout their life, even, you know, they'll have the same type of relationships. They'll have the same kind of things over and over again throughout their lifetime happening, regardless of how their actual reality shifts and changes. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're, they're thought forms and, um, you know, because all of that is like a loop, uh, a program loop, you know, it's what they're used to, you know, within their lives. So, you know, if you have self-knowledge, you know, you can go beyond all of that stuff. You know, it's, um, you know, them kind of thought forms that are in a loop. You know, I mean, the ancient Greeks, they said a long time ago that, you know, man, he's uh, he binds himself in circles, you know, in that kind of way, you know. And only the greatest, um, you know, beings, you know, can ever, you know, alleviate their own suffering, you know, beyond that. And, um, you know, in order to, you know, alleviate, you, you know, your mind suffering, you need to make space for a greater mind to emerge, you know, within that space, you know, and that will break the loop, you know, but it requires a hell of a lot of determination and focus, you, you know, and a hell of a lot of work as well. And, um, you know, people also, you know, you, you, that's like work you can do with inside yourself, but. If you want to break the loop outside yourself, you know, like you says, uh, people go into like certain relationships that they, you know, had in the past, you know, in the future. And, uh, you know, they're stuck in cycles and stuff. If they uh, if they're surrounded by, you know, strong people, you know, or stronger people as well, you know, that also helps, you know, to to get them out of that environment that they're within, you know, that's detrimental to themselves. You know, if they have like, um, you know, friends and they build new relationships, you know, built in, uh, you know, truth and strength and stuff, you know, that can also, you know, help to pull them from their old life into a new one 
you know, but ultimately, you know, it will lie with them. They have to consciously recognize, you know, these loops and that it's the same thing happening to them and then, you know, respond to it, you know, truthfully and change it, you know, want to change it, you know, because, you know, if they don't want to change something themselves, you know, it, you know, their friends or whatever can't, you know, do anything about it. You know, they've got to make the conscious decision to change it themselves and then, you know, move beyond it and know that actually, you know, um, you know, it's not as scary as they thought. They're not actually giving up something big for something small. They're actually giving up something small that's detrimental and, you know, toxic that they don't need. And they're actually going into a new place that's actually, you know, a lot greater. And they're going to, you know, have a lot more, you know, better stuff that comes into that space, you know? I think the key with that, though, is the recon- recognition of it. Because all of us are aware of that. And still many of us get caught in that loop. And until we do the work, like you mentioned, and take, take the time to tap into ourselves each hour every day, which is difficult to do because a lot of us get caught up in such a busy lifestyle. Um, that's the only way that that could be conquered. Yeah, it's true. It's, um, you know, it doesn't matter what situation you're in, you know, self-knowledge is um, what you need. You need to understand, you know, your true self. You know, you need to understand and allow, you know, more of your true self, you know, to express itself into the world. And in order to do that, you need to create a space, you know. So I just, you know, suggest creating a space, you know, every day, you know, and just sit there and just, you know, um, you know, just say to yourself, is there anything you need to know, you know, or is there anything, you know, anything that you can solve right there and then, you know, and, um, you know, and it won't be long, you know, because our mind is given to us to create solutions to problems, you know, like small problems, really, in, in the, in, you know, in the big scale of things, these are, you know, small problems, you know, you know, they might be big, you know, to the person at the time and stuff, but, you know, in the scale of things, they're very small problems, so they can use their human mind to be able to, you know, create solutions for them, but if they want to create and solve great problems, you know, you're going to need the greater mind for that, you know, and that's the deeper mind, you know, beyond the human mind. But, it's, you know, it can all be reached through stillness, you know, every day and meditation. You know, people don't know the power of stillness, you know, for the most part. Or, you know, that they have, you know, they have a true self. And then, you know, they have the smaller, you know, human self, you know. They need to get everything in through relationship, you know. And just, you know, like I says, you know, just take time out for themselves, you know, every single day without question. Because that's, you know, that's cultivating yourself and that's refining who you are. You know, that's refining and it's the refining process over time that changes you into what you're going to become, you know, and evolves you forward, you know. And uh, that's the part that you, um, you know, you need to create any any kind of change, you know, in your environment, in your home, you know, or within the world, you know, or the universe. So, you know, that's very important. Take time out for yourself every day. Right. So, so I think that the important thing here is to learn, people should learn how to meditate and make that connection. That's what it basically boils down to. <clears throat> yeah. They need to establish a relationship with the higher consciousness in themselves, basically, you know, and then learn to, you know, recognize that as well and, um, you know, not resist it as well. Because I remember, you know, at first I was, you know, quite, you know, scared myself of the level of peace and, uh, you know, quiet, you know, and warmth and benevolence and love, you know, that I felt, you know, in that kind of state. And, um, you know, uh, you kind of feel drunk, you know, on yourself when you're uh, in that kind of state at first until you get used to it. But that kind of state, that's the normal state of all human beings that it should be. You know, that's their natural state. You know, and nature itself, which is a reflection of the human body on the outside, you know, that's what nature is. It's a reflection of our body on the outside, you know. And, um, you know, when you're in that environment of nature, straight away, it gives you a connection to your true self, you know, to um, the earth and to who you truly are, you know. And that's why, um, you know, today we may be struggling within the context because we have cities and stuff that are illusionary man-made environments you know, but if we can go into nature, you know, the environment, to, you know, to create a relationship with a higher self, it's already there. You know, it's been made for us. You know, that's why God created nature, you know, in itself. So we always have a constant connection to our higher self Ain't until that. the until the point comes maybe in the future that we destroy it. 
but hopefully that uh, is never going to happen as it's going to end the world. <laughs> Let's take a break, well, Daniel. I hope it doesn't get that bad anyway. Let's take a break. I think we lost Sherry. All right, that sounds good, Stephen. We'll okay, be, okay. we'll be, yeah, give us about, I don't know, two, yeah, we'll two be right minutes. Back. Two minutes. So before the break, we were talking about and, dis- and discussing how your views of what people can do as a solution, as opposed to just focusing on what the reality that is maybe manifested from an old vibration. Do you think that there is something not just about the human body, not just about ourselves, something else that is contributing at this point and time for a reason to kind of help people move a little more forward, to help them wake up a little quicker? Because it sure seems like that's happening. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's definitely, uh, you know, changes taking place, you know, I mean, I think we've all noticed, you know, there's many people out there who's noticed as well that, you know, this awakening, it is coming within waves, you know, there are waves, you know, measurable waves of, uh, you know, awakening, you know, there was one in the summer of 2008 that a lot of people speak about, you know, where a lot of people, you know, um, towards the end of it, you know, I started my YouTube at the end of summer 2008. And I think Amy woke up towards the end of there as well. And many people I've spoken to as well, you know, hundreds, you know, over the years, you know, woke around that period. And then there was uh, towards the end of 2010 as well. And then since like, um, you know, 2012, the end of 2012 onwards, it's, uh, you know, we've gone through the era, you know, of awakening. We've gone into the era of, you know, doing and being, you know. So now we need to, um, you know, put all of our knowledge you know into use and you know knowledge is power yeah that can be true but knowledge is only power when you actually apply it in your life and in the world you know so that's what we all need to do now you know and moving forwards i think that that is so true and i think that um that is where and maybe this is you can give some more definition on this this is where people get stuck because they have so many things in this reality to distract to put you into a vibration of survival, paying your bills, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, keeping up with the Joneses, not having the Joneses judge you. You know what I'm saying? Like there's so many aspects of life that you say are a choice and you're right, but also a hand down from so many generations. So to pull themselves out of that point when they feel stuck and also doing the meditation and things like that, I get it. But if it's how is it that you think that they can actually start to change their mind about the reality they live in when they are living it as as they have seen it in the past? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I mean, um, you know, I mean, that's the thing about all of this. You know, it's not just one thing that they're going to have to change. It's their entire way of life and way of being, you know, and a lot of what we're doing, you know, you know, there's, uh, it's new territory, you know, just, you know, not just for us, but, you know, for the entire world as well. And, uh, you know, there's so many examples of, uh, you know, tribes within the past, you, you know, who had it right. I mean, all the, um, you know, tribes on the earth, the indigenous ones from all over the earth, you know, they were in balance with their environment. And, um, you know, I'm not saying technology is bad because ultimately, you know, it's not. But what is bad is um, anything that, you know, that's created technologically, that's um, that's used, that goes beyond self, you know, creating self-sufficiency, then it becomes detrimental and is always used to, you know, enslave populations, you know. So only take technology as far as, um, you know, as becoming self-sufficient with what you have, you know, and we can see in the world today that, you know, technology is rampant, you know, and, you know, that's the destination we're going, you know, it is total enslavement through technology, you know, of, uh, you know, of people who are stuck within their ego and, you know, disconnected from, you know, their, um, you know, you could say spirit, you know, or higher self or, you know, divine spark. But, um, you know, unless we, you know, change our lives, you know, on everything, you know, on every level, you know, we're uh, we're not going to get, you know, what we need. And, um, you know, we can create anything, you know, as a race. We just need to be willing to not be afraid to give things up, you know, certain things. You know, there's power, you know, in, um, you know, sacrificing things that are unnecessary. 
and a lot of the the things that are in you know the western world you know the way of life and stuff at the moment is unnecessary you know and there's you know there's no need for a lot of it and you know people if they just take a step back they can um you know they can identify loads of different areas in the life where they can do things better you know and create a better life for themselves you know and you know we're not talking big changes we're just talking you know minor adjustments that can create better things you know so um you know that's you know what i'm doing you know this year it and it's not a it's not a quick process either you know some things you can give up straight away but it's uh, it's like the balance thing isn't it you know it, it's um, as long as you're going in the right direction and you are actually doing the work you know you will eventually get to where you need to go to you know like i always say to um you know people on this journey of truth you know truth is not something you just become aware of and then you uh use like a little um you know like you become aware of and then you know that's it it's like a long refining process you know to refine you from one state of being into another one it's not just like something that you flick on overnight you know and um <clears throat> you know i mean you can have awakenings where you know where like you feel like a switch is flicked on and you change and everything but you know them anchor points in a consciousness of um, you know there was a slow process to get you from where you were to where you are even when you do have them you know epiphanies and stuff you know so you know as long as people are willing to do the work and be responsible you know and um, you know have a set goal as well that they wish to attain and they don't even need to get to the goal of where they're going as long as you have a goal then you have a general direction you know and um you know then it's a good thing you know i think that's important you know the the aspect of what you had just said in regards to the goal you know it gives everybody something to shoot for and like you said even if you don't maintain that goal or not it just gives you a little direction on which way to go you know on whatever the journey is but isn't that just manufacturing a fractal of self <laughs> Well, I mean, it's good to have a goal, but um, like I said, it's the same with, um, you know, when people are like, you know, they have like a idealistic view of how they want things to turn out or stuff, you know, that just basically invites disappointment, you know, and, um, you know, that's the mind that wants that. That's not the, you know, the true, you know, deeper self that wants some kind of things, you know, um, you know, the true self is happy, you know, if you're going in the right direction and uh, becoming closer to who you truly are, you know, it doesn't matter if you, you know, you reach your goals that you set for yourself, you know, because that's like a momentary uh, small thing, isn't it, in, you know, the context of how large everything is. Do you think that people are at a point where not only evolution or creativity or ideas, do you think the body is changing? Do you think that DNA is shifting? Yeah, I think um, like evolution is based on, you know, what we do. You know, we can become anything we want to be, you know, as long as we, um, you know, are very focused and, um, you know, whatever we do in our life, you know, has an effect on the body, you know. And, um, you know, definitely over the last few decades, you know, the body and the shape of the bodies has, you know, changed on people, you know, and a lot of that has to do with loads, of, you know, many factors like, um, you know, where they live and, you know, even over thousands of years as well, you know, that's why there's loads of different colours, you know, of uh, different people on the world because of, um, you know, the pressures of where they lived on altitudes and how much sunlight or how cold it was and stuff. You know, that's the only thing that separates people really, you know, nothing you know separates us truly you know on a you know there's, there's no big separation there really it's all within the mind and um you know when i say everything is one i always remind myself that you know on the highest level you know there is no difference between me and anybody else you know we all have the same potential and the same power you know we just need to remember to use it you know and you know remember how powerful we actually are you know I do know. And I think that, I mean, that's, I think part of this almost awakening or whatever you want to call it is that people are starting to understand the power within their own being. But I think another question that I have for you is that does this power take more people into ego or does this take more people into what you're calling that loving space? Well, it, uh, it depends, you know, it's, um, you know, there's so many different manifestations of it, you know, 
But if you really, um, you know, one of the things that woke me up was um, the truth. You know, I wanted to know the truth, you know, no matter what it meant for me or my ideas, you know, of myself or, you know, no matter, you know, what I thought, you know, of myself or others or the world. You know, I wanted to know, you know, the real truth of things. And then, you know, in the end, I found out that, you know, the truth is already alive and, you know, alive and well inside yourself. And everything outside is just there to enrich your own inner truth, you know. And, um, you know, I always just think about um, the ego thing, you know. It's you'll never fall into the trap of, you know, self-ego if you give yourself to, you know, something greater than yourself. So, you know, that could come through whatever form you want. You know, I personally, um, you know, I, I like to take myself out of the equation as much as possible and put myself into, you know, work, you know, serving the world and serving others. And, um, you know, when you give in to others and when you give in to something greater than yourself, you know, you're expanding into more of your own potential. You know, you're expanding more into your true self. And that in itself is opening up the energy flows. You know, you, you're reconnecting to, you know, yourself, the universe on all levels in the world. And, um, you know, you're just expanding, you know, and your awareness is going to expand and it will never shrink down to what it was before that, you know. So, you know, you can do a lot more then, you know, by just being open and, um, you know, putting yourself to work for something greater, you know. That makes a lot of sense, too, because maybe if you're, again, it, being energy beings or whatever that is, our focus, our attention seems to be a grand part of our creation. How much do you think the mind is in control of our being at this point in the game? Well, I would say that if you, um, you know, a lot of people think they're very spiritual, but, you know, recycling and stuff and just meditating, it doesn't make you spiritual, you know. <clears throat> You've got to really, you know, give everything, you know, in every part of your life. You know, there's four pillars of life and you need to have them all balanced. You know, one is, you know, your health and your body and your vessel. You need to take care of it and you need to take care of your diet, you know, and what you're doing. And uh, the other one is, um, you know, your relationships and you need to take care of, you know, all your relationships, you know, and who you're in relationship with and what you're doing and um, everything like that. And then there's your spirituality as well. You know, the core of your spirituality, you know, has to be, you know, based on actual direct experience, you know, and not actual, you know, fantasy or fairy tales, which is a mistake that, you know, a lot of spiritual people make. You know, where their actual, you know, their imagination has taken over their path, you know, and has led them, you know, off, you know, different roads that, you know, some people can get lost on the roads for many, many years, you know, and it's a detriment to their, you know, to their, you know, spirituality, really, you know, and um, a lot of people don't even notice, you know, sometimes. But if you, you know, if you check in with yourself every day and, you know, ask questions, you know, and just uh, take some time out, then you'll, you know, you'll get to where you need to be, you know, and you won't, um, you know, derail yourself, you know. <laughs> I like that term, derail yourself, because we are kind of, uh, we're on kind of this pathway, or maybe again, maybe it's just the energy that we're choosing to experience, but it seems like that we are at some type of fork, some type of place where people are being offered the opportunity to either experience a new vibration that maybe we are not really aware of yet, or to continue experiencing, maybe even um, needing to continue to experience what is already in, in play. So what do you think of that? Yeah, I... Um... I think people just need to know, you know, just to be responsible, you know, and put in the work. Like I says, you know, they need to be more aware of, um, you know, that they need to put in the work every day. And, uh, you know, the awareness is not just going to come by itself, you know. And, um, you know, they will need to, um, you know, enrich their being, you know, with a lot of information. And, yeah, there is a lot of disinformation out there. In fact, most of it is disinform uh, disinformation. But if they, you know, if they, you know, stay true to themselves and just take things as a possibility, you know, you don't even need to hold anything as belief. You know, it's not there to derail you. 
it's there to serve you and enrich you, you know, and it's there to strengthen you, you know, and it's it's only there, you know, all this exists on the outside, you know, to strengthen your own inner self, you know, and, um, you know, to arm it, you know, against um, BS, you know. <laughs> I love to hear that. So I think that if I'm understanding a lot of what you're saying is that we have it within us and we don't need to be dependent on what has been handed to us as either the reality as it is with the governments and religion and all of these things we need to start creating anew from within us is, do you think that there have been examples? You talked about ancient lifetimes and what examples would you use best to describe maybe a direction we have hope of. Yeah, well, I mentioned the indigenous tribes, you know, and they've always, uh, you know, lived in balance and harmony with, um, you know, the world. And, you know, one of the biggest things that people can use as a beachhead or an anchor point to create a whole new way of life and being, you know, where humans have actually achieved this within the world is to, you know, the greatest, the greatest hope within this world is not only the people themselves, it's what we already have as well up to this point, you know, and, um, you know, our creative flows of imagination as well, you know, forwards. But, you know, um, people need to observe the native tribes and, the, you know, the indigenous tribes and see how they've, you know, you know, got to where they have, you know, because they've lived for, you know, thousands of years, tens of thousands of years, you know, in balance. You know, they know how to look after the world already. You know, they have the knowledge. You know, we need to, you know, basically create a whole new way of being, you know, put technology into the new way of being, but only um, as much uh, as much as self-sufficiency, because then it won't be abused, you know, and just, you know, cultivate wisdom as well. But, um, you know, people need to give up everything if they want everything, you know. And, um, you know, and that goes on with the way of life. You know, we need to create a whole new way of life. But, you know, there's people out there, you know, the indigenous tribes who have already, you know, they've already created a, you know, fantastic way of living in balance with uh, nature, you know, and in harmony and stuff, you know, because, you know, they're some of the only beings within the world that are actually taking on the, um, you know, the, the signature of a white blood cell you know, white blood cell, you know, and um, the way the West is at the moment, you know, the way people say it's a normal way of living, you know, it's far from normal, you know, this isn't a normal way of living, you know, millions, you know, thousands of people dying every, you know, day and year and, you know, wars all over the place, you know, that's not a normal state of affairs, you know, for a world, you know, human beings are supposed to be, you know, peaceful, they're supposed to be, you know, on a higher level, not bringing harm to others, you know, they're supposed to be stewards of the earth and animals, you know, and, um, you know, so I'd say if people, you know, ultimately it comes down to self-knowledge again, first people need to work their own stuff out, you know, inside themselves, and then that will create a space after a while in themselves where they can give to others, but not give to others and make themselves uh, destitute and, you know, um, you know, poor. They'll be able to give, you know, in abundance, you know, to the world and to others. And then then they're in a position, you know, to work with others as well. And then, uh, you know, all the work will just be amplified, you know, uh, infinitely then, you know. But that that's a great starting point, you know, to, um, you know, to get to that place in yourself first and then, you know, go from there, really, you know. The world has just started, though. I mean, think about it. This is just coming about with, with the world. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying just coming about, but people are now learning. Imagine how long it's going to take for this world to be actually a world of peace and love. Think about it. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things about uh, peace, you know. Um, you know, people haven't got the capacity for peace, you know. It's the reflection thing again. You know, people haven't cultivated peace in themselves, you know, so they will never be able to attain peace in the world, you right. know, because the world is a reflection. So they need to, if they want peace, you know, it has to start with themselves. They have to master their own mind, you know. They have to um, put themselves in true relationship, you know, with the higher self, with the higher consciousness, you know. They've got to take time out for themselves and they've got to put in the work, you know, every single day you know, every day, you know, because you're not going to get given anything, you know, for nothing, you know, and we're the ones who have to do the work, you know, nobody else is going to do it for us, you know, no allies of humanity or anything are going to come down here into this world and do the work for us that we are supposed to be doing, you know, 
because we're the ones who are supposed to be doing it, you know, and even if they were to come in, you know, beings from other worlds or whatever and save the human race, which they never would because allies would not do that. You know, we, um, you know, cause they don't want to be babysitting, you know, us for things that we should be doing anyway. You know, what we need to do is become a force for good within the world, get organized. And, um, you know, as soon as people who like peace are as organized or if not more organized than those who like war, then there will be peace, you know, after that, you know. Well, it's, it's an incredible way of looking at things. I mean, the, the, the common human being doesn't look at things like that. Um, in our world <clears throat> and, you know, having conversations like this on the radio, like on Sherry's show is, is a great stat and other people, you know, sharing the knowledge. Yeah. I mean, doing shows like this, it really just, um, you know, puts new ideas out there, new thoughts, you know, like even if there's one person who had, you know, like one good thought during the show or whatever, you know, and send them in a new direction that's beneficial to them. You know, if you're working on yourself and it's beneficial to you, it's going to be beneficial to the whole as well. You know, if you're following that true, um, you know, spark in yourself. And I think it offers validation, too, because while you're talking, I'm putting pieces together of, of things that I know to be true and how I've uh, found them to be true in my own life and realizing that you and I are, are the same. Um, and, and the goal is the same, um, just from different perspectives, um, from around the world and, and working together with these groups and saying, you know, you're just like me, having someone hear that going, well, they're just like me too. And, yeah. And reaching out and, yeah. and being the best me and you, um, you know, watching you, listening to you with your examples, you know, uh, putting the pieces together, uh, uh, you know, is a connection that kind of supersedes, you know, just knowing that there's someone else who knows what I know is enough to give me the peace to put away any doubt that I may have within myself so that I can move forward in being so that other people can see that uh, within me and, and find it for themselves. Yeah, like I said, you know, um, you know, like uh, Jesus said, you know, just be the example, you know, and shine it, you know, and, you know, if you do your self work and you're strong in yourself, it's going to make everybody else, you know, stronger as well. You know, and there was a saying as well that, um, you know, late um, girls compete with each other, but, um, you know, women, they strengthen one another, you know, and empower one another. And it's the same for guys as well, you know. So, um, you know, people just need to give up a lot of the way that they see us and a lot of the things that they, you know, are told are normal, you know, because the way the West is now isn't normal. And the reason why it isn't normal is because it's detrimental to the environment and it's detrimental to the world. You know, it's not within unity or harmony. You know, it's not natural, basically. It's not a natural way of being. It's a learned way of being. And they need to unlearn, you know, what's been learned and start again, you know. And, um, you know, looking at indigenous tribes and stuff, you know, there's so much wisdom there, you know, and it's largely ignored. And people need to look into the native tribes all over the world and see how they do things and, um, you know, and really listen to them because they really know what they're talking about, you know. And that's one of the, the big areas that's, you know, missed out in our world at the moment, you know. So, you know, I, I work with, um, you know, some native people as well. And, um, you know, I like to do that because I know it's one of the, uh, the biggest hopes for the human race as a whole in coming together because, you know, they've had the struggle for, you know, many hundreds of years. And, um, you know, that's why I like to go into the ancient history as well in, um, in, uh, Europe and stuff, you know, because the ancient, the ancient European tribes, you know, they need to, you know, get their self identity back and get more powerful again, you know, because, you know, the entire history and everything that we're learning is, you know, it's all bunkum, you know, it's, you know, it's crap, you know, you go to, you know, um, university, it's a universe city. You know, you go to college, it's a uh, collage of information, you know, and the people who come out um, owning all of that knowledge are the people who are enslaving everybody, you know. So, you know, a lot of my um, stuff, you know, I'll only, you know, speak to those who, you know, deserving of it, who, you know, I see as wise or whatever as well. You know, so, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs>
Well, and I think that that's kind of, I mean, this is all part of it, is having discernment as opposed to judgment, right? Don't you think that that plays a big part? Yeah, definitely. That's that's like one of the main parts, you know. There's, um, you know, um, you know, the languages of man are diverse, you know, nowadays, you know, in the modern world. And, um, you know, people need to be able to identify the wolves from the sheep, you know, or the pretenders from those who are real. And if they can identify that, you know, then that in itself will help them to, um, you know, to stay clear of danger and uh, to stay clear of, um, you know, people and things, you know, and, um, you know, basically their labor, you know, will be protected, you know, instead of being stolen from them, you know, because, uh, you know, the Nazi Germans a long time ago, you know, they said, you know, work sets you free. But, you know, it's only half true, you know, work sets you free. Yes, but it's not when it's working for somebody else. It's it's when it's um, working, you know, for your true self, you know, your goal. So they kind of take um, truths and uh, they kind of put it into the ego realm and make the truths work for them, if you know what I mean. So you, you need to, you know, just be discerning, you know, and uh, cultivate yourself, you know, do stillness. You know, that will make you more receptive straight away. You know, if you do stillness every day and, uh, you know, meditation, you know, to, you know, um, being more sensitive to everything, you know, to people who are, um, you know, true and people who aren't, you know, you'll have a good feeling. You know, it's called knowledge in the universe, you know, and people need to cultivate their knowledge, you know, the self knowledge, you know. Well, and I think that that's something that if people can really understand that it is held within them, that. The meditation and the silence is just allowing you to connect into something that is already there. It's not something that's created or you have to work on or that needs whatever it is. It's it's about really being able to connect into, like what you're saying, experiencing the physical reality from a place of happiness, love, joy, instead of these lower vibrations that are being shoved down our throat right now. Again, maybe out of our own creation, not trying to put again, you know, outside of us. And and it seems so as we check in with ourselves, you know, we have to have the guts to take in what we've learned from ourselves and apply it out there into our reality. So if someone doesn't feel right, but I feel bullied by them to be include, you know, to to do something with them or to have a conversation with them. Um, and I know that they're leading me round, down the wrong path, um, even if it's something that I'm interested in, to have the guts to say, you know what, I really don't want to talk to you, and then not talk to them. Um, and, and, you know, really deciding what doesn't serve you in your life and, and getting rid of those things, but having the guts to do it from the knowledge of who you truly are. Well, and I think it's it's also a point of, and, and tell me what your opinion of this, Daniel, is. Because one of the things that I'm really trying to work on for myself is that when when a vibration hits me from someone else that I do not like, they're doing something that I don't like, they're acting in a way that I don't like, it's rubbing me, it's causing me, whatever it is, I have to take a look within myself. I have to look at why is that triggering me? What is it about myself that I am either seeing, again, as a reflection, in my opinion, or as <clears throat> something that I need to work on, blah, blah, blah. What do you think? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I, uh, sorry, I was just uh, clicking around then. Um, yeah, it's, uh, a, a, you know, everybody around you, you know, is uh, a reflection, you know, just like, um, you know, we've spoken of loads. And, uh, you know, the universe, you know, and people, you know, people are teachers. You just need to, um, you know, put yourself into a space where what you're learning, you know, I mean, even if people um, around you are bad or negative, you know, you can still learn from them. You know, you can learn uh, what not to do. You know, you can learn, um, you know, sin, which means error. You know, sin means error. You know, what not to do. So you can learn, you know, what not to do from them. But also the people who are actually, um, you know, a lot more wiser, who actually do have things to learn, you know, and, um, you know, you can learn from them as well. And, uh, you know, I mean, there's so much you can learn. You just need to choose, you know, you need to find out what your nature is and then you need to, um, you know, go in that direction basically. And, you know, um, you know, it'll feel very peaceful for you. You know, the more, uh, you know, the more you're following your true um, purpose and your destiny, 
you know, the more peace you're going to feel at a higher level as well. You know, don't resist, you know, your heart with the selfish mind. You know, like I says earlier, you know, there's two minds a person has. You know, don't allow your ego, you know, the I, which you think is you, you know, control your life. Because a lot of the thoughts that you have in your head, they're shared by multiple people simultaneously all at the same time. You know, that's why it's called the mental environment. It's a dimension, you know. Your thoughts can influence them and they can influence your thoughts. But if you're not within the mental environment, if you're not operating from that level, you know, you're operating from a higher level, your higher consciousness and your higher self, you know, the mental environment has no effect on you whatsoever. You know, you like advertisements, they have no effect on you because they're all tailored to, you know, body identification. They're all tailored to, um, you know, your, uh, your ego, you know, but you're above all of that. So, you know, you're awake and aware, you know, you don't need any of the crap that they're trying to sell you and give you because, you know, you've already got everything you need and more as well, you know, and, uh, you know, they need us, you know, these controllers or people who try to dominate or beings who try to dominate, you know, but we don't need them, you know, and we've done, that's you know, a, we've done, a, yeah, go on. I'm sorry. That's a good question, though, is that when you say abundance and that we have more than what we need we it, we are always in manifestation and creation do you think that there has been maybe a negative vibration on having things or having abundance and so in the in the new age and all of these other things it's almost thought of as retreating to nothing where I feel like that it should be an integration of the ancient along with technology and evolution being able to literally manifest whatever it is that we see, want, have, what it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter if it's physical. It doesn't matter if it's a relationship, abundance in whatever it is. We should be at a point now or, or I want to think that we're going in the point or direction where that's possible. Yeah, I think uh, anything's possible, you know, but I always like to go on, you know, from um, where we are right now, you know, as opposed to where, you know, the mind wants to be or thinks it should be or whatever, you know, because then you can really build something constructive and you can actually go from the steps, you know, like they say, don't try to, you know, fly before you've learned to, you know, walk and then run and then, you know, jump into the air or whatever, you know. <laughs> So, um, which I yeah. think is very true. So I, so then it brings me to the other question of what about the people who are doing it? What about the people who are experiencing dimensional travel, that astral project, that lucid dream regularly, that are born with gifts that are beyond the reality or physical reality of what is thought of as the norm? What do you think is happening there? Yeah, I mean, I experienced a lot of that myself, you know, from my journey. And that's one of the reasons why I chose my YouTube avatar as well. And, um, you know, some of the things I do. But, um, you know, don't get, you know, lost within that because, yeah, you might be having mystical, spiritual experiences, uh, experiences and stuff to a high extreme, you know. But, you know, the only use, you know, for you is how can you bring that knowledge back and then apply it within the world constructively, you know. So don't get lost in all of that stuff, you know, for long periods of time. You know, delve into it. Yeah, if, if the questions you want to know, you know, explore, you know. But, you know, when you have your answer, you know, don't, um, you know, just don't get lost in it. That takes you out of the world because true spirituality will always make you stronger. It will take you out of the world for little, small amounts of time. But then it will always bring you back to the world you know, armed up to the teeth with, you know, spiritual knowledge, you know, to do battle, it will always make you stronger and put you back into the world. Which makes a lot of sense. And I think that that, I love that you're saying that because I think that that's where a lot of the misdirection has gone is teaching people to be outside of the body, to be experiencing a realm that is, again, I believe is in existence because I, I really, um, I, I think that there are all dimensions going on in, in this reality all the time, but it's not our vibrational sequence at this moment to see them. So when you go outside of the body and you start experiencing all these things, do you think that it actually inhibits or dwarfs or whatever the experience that we're supposed to be having now? 
Well, I don't think it inhibits it. I think it gives you a, an expanded awareness, you know, where as the program of this world tries to build boxes for everybody, you know, we live in boxed homes, you know, in, 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 in you know, in countries like that, you know, and it's a very uh, linear, like kind of, um, you know, conformity. It tries to make you conform. But, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, experiences like that, you know, and people who, um, you know, do, you know, um, what are the DMT and stuff, you know, they uh, they have experiences that uh, take them outside of the box, you know. So I don't think it inhibits it. I think it's a good thing, you know. It's a higher level of consciousness and they've seen something more, something greater than the box that they've tried to been shoved in, you know. The, their awareness is already greater than the box that has been, you know, constructed to them to, you know, to enslave them and stuff. So I think it's a good thing. I just think that people you know, need to not get lost in that, you know, for, you know, long periods of time, you know, because, you know, ultimately, you know, they're, they were born in the world, you know, with a purpose, you know, everything has purpose and they need to realize what the purpose is and that anything they learn, you know, they can bring back into the world and give it to others, you know, give it to the world, you know, because that's what it's really for, you know, it's not even about us, it's about, um, you know, giving, you know, what we have, you know, to create a better world, you know, and to improve it. I definitely agree with that. And I think that that is part of our own experience as well, is it's once we come into that place of understanding what that gift to the world is, it also is the reflection of what is the gift to us to bring us into that higher vibration, to experience this world where we're supposed to, right? Yeah, because ultimately, you know, it's a war on consciousness itself, you know, to keep people from connecting to that higher, you know, consciousness, you know, like I says, you must, you know, have a relationship with your higher self, you know, it's not an individual, you know, it's, it's a relationship and you, you must start every day, you know, to have that relationship with that part of yourself because then you can't be put within any box ever, you know, you're greater than the people who are actually trying to put you into the box, you know, you're far more aware, far more focused and, um, you know, and because of that, you're far more concentrated and concentration is power in a being, you know, the more concentrated, the more um, potent an influence you have on all beings of lesser concentration, you know. Well, and I think so, yeah. that that's brilliant. That's a brilliant point because it can be, I think that that's, it got manipulated, right? I mean, that's the exact point that they're using now as the level of keeping the control, using what is within the human being, amplifying it, putting them into a place of where they're just reliving the trauma and the lower vibrations within their own body. Right. It's like they, the cell, the trap is really within themselves until they can pull themselves to this higher level of consciousness that you're speaking of. Yeah. And just, you know, like I says, um, you know, focus on it every day, you know, take some time out for yourself every day. You know, know that, you know, you do have that divine uh, spiritual self within inside yourself. You know, because we are, you know, spiritual beings having a human experience, you know, not human beings having a spiritual experience. So, you know, once you have it in the right, um, you know, context and everything, then it becomes easier. And, you know, the most important things in a person's life, you know, are like I said earlier, which I think quite finished, but it is uh, they have four pillars uh, like the legs of a table in their life that they must work on. And, um, you know, your spirituality and your life is only as strong as the weakest pillar. And the four pillars are, you know, relationships, you know, uh, your health, um, you know, your work and providership pillar and your spirituality pillar, you know. And, you know, some people get lost in just the spirituality. So the health or relationships suffer. Some people go too far into the work and providership, you know, so the, the relationships suffer again or, you know, the health. But as long as you have, you know, the four pillars balanced, you know, and you're always conscious of it every single day as well, then you'll become a very powerful, um, you know, spiritual being, you know. Which is also a part of being in that happiness, that love vibration, right? It's not about, again, like when you're saying and using words like power and powerful, I think a lot of times that gets perceived as being in ego or as being above others, when in reality it is just being able to experience what we're here to experience. 
Yeah, I mean, um, you know, within the ego, you know, power, you know, is abused and it's always, um, you know, self-destructive and destructive to anybody that's, you know, in the way of it. But when it's coming from a higher place, you know, power is, you know, it's just how you move energy from one domain into another. And all you're doing is moving more of your energy, you know, from a high dimension, you know, into your being now, into a lower dimension, you know. And as long as, you know, you, uh, you're you doing it, you know, in a place of your heart and not your human mind or ego, you know, and you're doing it with wisdom and it has an equal and opposite wisdom, you know, that restrains it from becoming destructive and, um, you know, restrains it from, you know, you know, creating utter chaos, you know, like in the past. So, you know, that's the thing, you know. <laughs> Which, again, I mean, you're making so much sense. And I, I hope that the listeners are really able to grasp on to what you're saying. I feel like you're really um, communicating in a way that maybe opening up and planting seeds for this to become a reality for a majority as opposed to... um a minority, right? It, it seems to uh, be happening quickly. And I really appreciate uh, your wisdom and, and the amount of effort that you've put in to accomplishing your mission or your goal, whatever it is that you see that you're here to do. I think it's awesome. Cheers. <clears throat> yeah, it's just an ongoing thing, you know. My, my work's constantly, you know, evolving from what it was into what it is now. And it's just, you know, I have to make minor adjustments you know, to what's going on, you know, within the world as well. Like, um, you know, YouTube's a completely different place nowadays to, you know, how it used to be in the in the past and stuff, you know. And, um, you know, there's a lot more stricter rules there now, you know, with uh, many things. And, you know, it's just basically, you know, intelligence is not how you can take an information and then regurgitate it, you know. Intelligence within the universe is um, how you adapt to change, you know, quickly. So, you know, if you want to become, you know, intelligent, then just become adaptive, you know, become fluid, you know, be as water, you know, as Bruce Lee said. And I think that's a great point, again, because when you start talking about being fluid, allowing things to flow, being open, if we can't perceive it, if we can't bring it into the consciousness, we have to allow it to come from somewhere, right? And it's in the collective, so... It just makes sense that what you're saying about connecting in and, and being in that space of openness, it really has to be the key. Yeah, definitely, you know. I mean, we all have keys with inside us, you know, and, uh, you know, there's so many doors, you know, and I just, um, you know, just basically just be fluid and be open and then, you know, use discernment so you're not, you know, taking advantage of, you know, with your work that you do and, um, you know, with the energy you're putting in. Because, you know, within the same space in this world, you know, there's vampires and then there's, um, you know, sorcerers, you know. And, you know, you need to learn to be a sorcerer, you know. Well, this is this is the perfect show for that. <laughs> Because that's kind of, I believe that alchemy, natural health, growing our own food, doing all of these things, it shouldn't, again, it shouldn't be the minority of people doing it. It should be how things are and allowing the technologies and free energy and things that will make these all a possibility and easy for people to remember how they can take care of themselves as opposed to being so dependent on the governments, the religions, the, the things that have taken us outside of our being. Yeah. And I say, you know, um, it's all about response, you know, ability, you know, responsibility and just, um, you know, making minor adjustments, you know, even if you make one small minor adjustment a day, you know, when you work towards, you know, something good that you know is good, then, you know, you're becoming, you know, refined more and you're becoming a little bit stronger each day. You know, if you take time out for yourself every day, then each day you'll become a little bit more yourself, you know, more your true self. And, um, you know, that's why I like to do meditation every day. That's why I like to create my works and stuff that I do and all my work and my paintings and, you know, everything else I do, because I know that each day I'm becoming, you know, more me, you know, the real me, you know, and I get to share all my gifts with everybody else, you know, just as you do and, you know, others. So, uh, you know, and in giving that, you know, is making you stronger anyway. So, you know, and through that you feel fulfilled and you get a hell of a lot of peace as well. 
you know, and that's the kind of piece that, you know, I never give up. <laughs> well, because I think it almost becomes addictive, right? It's almost like you can't imagine being outside of that space. And when it does come, it's like, oh, you know, it, that's it's a warning sign, not necessarily a trauma, you know? Yeah, and you get to carry, you know, the piece around with you while you're within the world, you know, all over the place. So it's, um, you know, what you uh, gain, you know, you know, nobody can take away your experience. So what you've gained through experience and what you gain, you know, it can never be taken away, you know, and it becomes a part of you, you know, and that's, you know, that's true evolution, really, you know. Well, I think don't isn't there a place of where we have to, again, change almost the structure of our own inner being to be able to accept the things that are capable, the limitations that our body has accepted as far as if you don't eat right, if you don't do this, if you don't do that, all of these things going to the doctors, you know, going and, and handling all of the things, again, outside of our being. Do you think that that's a huge step for people to take or do you think that that's going to happen with flow as soon as they start realizing more of their own self? I think it's, uh, you know, it's different with everybody. But I think that, um, you know, basically if people put in the work today, you know, on themselves in, you know, whatever area, like I says, we identified four areas. There is the relationships, you know, and it's not just with people. It's with items or material possession or whatever else, the relationship to anything, you know, within themselves or like you said, carrying beliefs around or thought forms or whatever. They, you know, no longer serve them. You know, I don't take anything from the past that doesn't serve me in the present. You know, I've given all of it up. You know, and to me, there is only this one moment. You know, there's no past. There's no future. You know, I just create as I go. You know, I'm in fluid awareness, you know, as I like to call it. So I just uh, create and go, you know, knowing that abundance is within me. And that's, you know, through living that way, it will create abundance around me, you know, and for others, you know, allow me to give to others. And then there's your health as well, you know, being conscious of your body, you know, everybody can uh, have a better diet and work on their body, you know, and, um, you know, I like to exercise every day, you know, for instance, and do weights because, you know, I think, um, you know, that's what a, a human would be doing anyway, you know, uh, in in the natural world, in nature, you know, when they were created, you know, physical, you know, in, your body needs to be strong, you know, not only to operate within the world, but you want it to also last as long as possible, you know, so that's something everybody can work on as well. So that's relationships and health they can work on, you know, so that's going to keep them busy. And then there's work and providership, you know, your spiritual work online and stuff or, you know, whatever you do or yoga or, you know, wh whatever you like to do. You know, and then there's the, um, you know, your work um, within the world as well, you know, earning money and stuff and providing, you know, for your family and stuff. And uh, and then lastly, there's your spirituality as well, which is something that everybody can work on. But <clears throat> like I said, you know, don't just work on just one area and get it sorted. You know, sometimes, you know, um, you know, different areas require different degrees of work, obviously, you know, but as long as you have all four pillars of your life, you know, balance, you know, relationships, you know, your health, your spirituality and your work and providership, then, um, you know, you'll be, you know, it's all good. <laughs> so I really can appreciate all of this. Um, and thank you so much for coming on to this show. And I hope that everyone enjoyed your knowledge and, and the wisdom that you bring forward and can plant the seeds necessary for humanity to experience what's coming next. Thank you so much for coming on. I hope everyone enjoyed the show. Good night, everybody.